This is my radio control car reference I made back in 2004. And I tried to document all the major RC vehicles uh, since like 1975 or something. This was an 81 Mattel item called Ralph Robot. And, uh, and essentially it's, it's head controlled. Um, I believe that it had a shake switch or something. And, uh, and here's a really cool old one. This was before really radio control was cheap enough. They were doing, I think this was Taiwan toys, but I, I believe they were doing this way before 1983, but it's just basically a clicker. Um, this thing makes noises. The remote kind of makes noises. The car responds to the noises so you can control it. Um, and then we're going to just rifle through, I guess it was probably 2006 maybe that I st stopped making this because this is 2004 through five MGA, the, uh, a tank treaded type vehicle and then we have uh this ufo um that was uh 2003 and 5. um here's tyco rc so 1987 they started with this swamp rot rat um and let me adjust this camera a little bit better get a better view here um So it has some paddles and it has wheels too, the Swamp Rat. Uh, here's a Matchbox 1987 skateboard. Um, I think it's just uh, standard steering. Uh, it says, he's rad, he's RC, special design, four function radio, skateboarder, who can do the same wild tricks that real skateboarders do. Slalom, wheelie, spin left, spin right and even work a half pipe. So, um, sounds like maybe it has tank steering. Um, <clears throat> then in 1987, we have RC Shocker, and it was all about the shocks. It didn't have to do a big stunt back then. It can just be about shocks. Um, <clears throat> then uh, in 89, this is when Tyco really started to take off with the extreme Tyco RC that we know. Uh, Typhoon, Typhoon Hovercraft, um, that's 1989. 1994, this is the Hijacker, and uh, basically it just lifted up, it had two different positions. Um, this was huge, there was more than 250,000 uh, of these made. Um, the, uh, the uh, what would they call that, the tracks, um, tracks. Yeah, Fast Tracks, T-R-A-X-X, -X, Fast Tracks. That was huge back in, in, uh, in the mid-90s, like 94, 95. Then uh, <clears throat> they started doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Like right here is 1994, five. They did this triple wheels. Um, it was pretty cool. These back two wheels drove tank steering. Um, then... Uh, then in 1994, they had Scorcher. Scorcher was just this six-wheeled vehicle, um, but it, it could go over a lot more terrain because of that. There was over 500,000 of these things sold. It did probably $20 million in 94. Um, then they start, just like Fast Tracks, they started to take off with, the, with these kind of vehicles, the FX. These did pretty good too, but the, the extreme stuff started to take off and this stuff started to stick to hobby at that point. Now you have the Scorpion RC and it's, I think it's squirted water if I recall. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it did, uh, it wasn't a big seller. I think it did $10 million. Um, but uh, uh, 1994 Sumo Warriors, uh, it didn't really do much business at all. Um, but it was a kind of the first battling platform, like, like battling robots and stuff. Um, and, uh, and then this was, uh, the Python. Oh, this is the one that squirted water. Um, and it, 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 it didn't really take off. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're kind of similar. Um, but uh, then the, the outlaw, um, and I think this was just about being that you had this power boost engine. Then you had Riptide. They, they did 
they did moderately okay with these um, $8 million maybe with these Riptide boats. The hijacker, we already saw that. Firepower, it shot darts in 95. Uh, then Rebound, now we're talking some real money. Rebound, as you know, is is um, a spinoff of, or a ripoff or something of, of Hasbro's Ricochet, which, um, this one, they they came out with this in 95, had it in 95, 96, 97. I think they sold 6 million of them or something. Or no, I don't know how many they sold. But by the time 95 through 2002 came through, they sold $40 million worth of these things. Rebound. So Tyco basically took it over. Then uh, the mutator, the front lowered down, the back lowered down, both sides lowered down. It was just like a, a rotating pivot point in the front, 96. Um, there was big press on this, it did $10 million. Um, then there's a Dagger RC. It was just uh, super lightweight on front, so it did a lot of stunts and spinning and stuff. The Twister by Bing Zoom in 97. Um, now they started to really buy stuff from inventors and from 97 through for many years, Bang Zoom and, and then the uh, Kisscom, the OB, um, BMT, a lot of people were selling um, radio control vehicles with uh, Terrain Twister. Um, I would guess it might've done like uh, 10, 15 million, $20 million or something um, at least. Um, then they started to take off with, uh, this, um, uh, Psycho RC and Psycho was just tank steering rear large wheels. Um, they did this transforming. It's hard to tell in this picture, but it's a tread that transforms from square to lower profile. So you could kind of do the rebound tricks with a treaded vehicle in 90, 98. Didn't do much. The Psycho did pretty well. I think 250,000 units were sold. Um, this Tyco uh, flex pack system actually in itself did, did millions. Um, there was this uh, hammerhead. I think that was a bang zoom thing. It was dropped. They didn't end up doing it. Um, then uh, you have the revolver and this was just crazy with these roll bars and super fast wheels. It was $20 price point or less. Um, it did pretty well to, in 98 through 2003. I think they sold over 250,000 units. Um, then Gravedigger RC. This is probably the first time we saw Gravedigger RC. Um, I have here, if you can't, can't see the picture, canned heat. It was their first $20, like, smaller RC. Um, this was a flop, but this uh, Creature X. And then they, this was a flop too. They, they had, like, the speed wrench and stuff. Um, 2000 Mattel, um, I don't know why this is even in my book. Uh, oh, I think because of the keys, they, they had a key remote instead of a regular remote. Oh boy, that was exciting. Um, these, uh, racing rats, they were just like a smaller RC car that had proportional steering that drove like crazy fast. I think it was proportional steering. Um, let's see. The stunt car, uh, fast charge technology, it says. And then you had a wave ripper. I don't know how these did. I think these did okay. Then uh, jackknife. Uh, that was like a, a cool configuration for stunts that was done with Hasbro, Stunt Boss, here. And the Bing Zoom guys basically added a truck to it so, they, so we could have a stunt truck. Neat marketing position. Vertigo, this was cool. It was a splitting up of the of the rebound. And that was by the Ob and Mike Linders. And this one was cool because it rolled it. It did real well too, by the way, I think. Um, so then this one basically took advantage of the centrifugal inertia. And when you forward and reversed it, it would roll up the whole body around itself in three segments. Uh, the Rewinder, I have that. These, these are all in my collection. Um, let's see, Power Changers. Um, I don't have much to say about these. Uh, this was my first success, Whiplash RC. And this was like a $30 position where all these other rebound positions and stuff were like 50. Um, 
it was innovative to come up with a stunt that was kid powered here where you cranked up the car in half and cranked up a spring three times. And then the remote controller had a crank handle that released the spring by reversing the, the drive motor. So there was no added motor for the stunt. It was a free stunt. So they did real well. Um, as I recall, the royalties on that were like 30 million over the over a couple of years. I mean, 30, not the, the, the gross volume from Mattel was about 30 million. Um, and uh, uh, so we had the, uh, the extreme cycle. That was that flywheel vehicle that Bang Zoom sold in. They did miniature versions. Bang Zoom sold that to five different companies over the years. Um, I'm gonna go a little faster through here. Here's a um, <clears throat> stow and go. <clears throat> then, uh, oh, Hot Popper, that was a jumping vehicle that I invented at the OB. That was an 04. And, uh, oh, I guess there's sketches in here too. Um, it's just interesting. Uh, like three wheels facing down. It did a pretty cool trick. 06 fall. Now we're at other RC. Um, weird. That's funny. Um, oh, this was super awesome. Spin Master ended up, I think, uh, licensing this, but this came out online on, on the YouTube. Some hobbyists made it and it could go on water and fly and it was, it was really awesome. It's called the Hydrofoil. Hydrofoam. I don't know what Spin Master called it. There's a lot of these pet stuff. I'm not going to really focus on this too much, but radio controlled dinosaurs basically. I think this had like a gyro, it's just called Gyro Force. I think it had a gyro that would kick it in fast speed. And this was big. This was Spin Master's Zero Gravity Wall Climber. It was about it was about that big. I mean, it was it was pretty big. And it would basically just seal up to the wall and you could drive it and it had like tank steering. Um, very big, they made, that, they made that smaller years later. Um, here's an MGA Lancy remote control car. Then uh, Nico, um, we'll go through this kind of quick. There's a transforming buggy style to pick up to, you know, transforming vehicle here. Deceptor, they called it. It's a jumper car. I actually have that. It's a tremendously strong spring in here and it really jumps. And it's really a heavy vehicle. It's impressive that they can even get it to jump. Um, this just extends, the front extends. It's called the Extender in 95. So I guess these guys in Tyco were kind of neck and neck at this time. This thing I think would um, like the, the tires would change angle and it would do some cool stuff. Hercules. And then here's the Nico 97, the Acrobat. And this actually did like a flip. I think there was like a bar in the back and it did a sideways uh, uh, side roll. And overseas, I think it did great. Not so much here. Skid burner. Not sure how this works. Spoiler pushes down before starting to peel out. The vehicle peels out. Yeah, I don't know how they do the peel off. So we can we can look this up. Skid burner, Nico, 1994. Hasbro. Okay. The Claw. I don't think that was even RC, but the Claw, uh, basically when it comes up to an obstacle, the tires open up and it can overcome the obstacle. The Ricochet RC, huge success. Um, and 95, 96, 97, then after 97, the Tyco RC rebound. I, to, as far as the, I know, there was never a legal case or anything on that. Just Tyco took it. Um, oh, this is cool. The Ricochet a bike, motorcycle. It might have been an inventor item. It does flips and can somersault around and stuff. Um, 
We should find a video of this. Tire storm. That was neat. Centrifugal force would make the tire just expand in diameter. Uh, stump boss was just uh, geometry with the wheels and the body so that the wheels were always touching the body no matter what. So you could eventually just ride itself. So everything it, it, after after the late after the mid to late nineties things had to land on on their wheels. That was a rule. Well, this was a KID invention to Hasbro. The the crash back. It was a vinyl body, and it had a ratcheted crashing feature where the wheelbase shortened and the vinyl body wrinkled. And then there's a, a motor that can push it back, and, and you hit the you hit the button, and and it just stitches itself back to full length. Well, here's a vehicle that's the ATRC all-terrain radio vehicle with just with single tank tread in the back. It's kind of like a snowmobile with wheels in the front. Uh, Air Devil. Um, it just it just does a jump. Jumps 12 inches. Um, here's the Tonka RC. I think that's the this is the Air Devil. Yeah, that's the jumper. It can jump over a curb. And the SkyDriver is one of my favorites ever because um, it just does a forward somersault when you go forward and kick it in reverse and the body's designed in a way where this tail causes it to jump so it's a gets a huge jump they sold over five four hundred thousand of these things um, it was a pretty good hit and they didn't have really a complicated mechanism very clever geometry on that body um, and there's that, uh, I don't know why I say that up there. This is the stunt boss. That, and then uh, just some other stuff here that I'm going to pass through faster. Hasbro Tiger. This was just kind of a big thing in 2000. It was, it was huge. It was like the wheelbase here was like this big. The Havoc. Um, Lanard. Oh man, this goes to 87. Oh boy, I could pop a wheelie, look at it. I guess Lanard invented the rebound. Dirty Dozen. Oh, there's like three wheels on each wheel. So it's six wheels, so it's a dozen wheels. Get it, Dirty Dozen. Here's the four Fang by Lanard in 87. And then here's the Great White. These tires expanded just like the Tire Storm, but in 87. Let's see, DSI. DSI came up with this flywheel vehicle, but they put the flywheel like in here where my coating and Bang Zoom ended up putting it in the back here, and that succeeded. This did, this Kawasaki didn't do too well. It's why Bang Zoom had trouble selling their motorcycle, in fact, because they said motorcycles didn't sell. But his motorcycle was super badass, and this wasn't, as I recall, it was a good attempt. It just wasn't fun to play with. Street Savage. I remember that was neat. I think Bang Zoom sold this, and the, the left and right, when you took off, would kind of have this neat look to it. This would take off, and it was pivoted in the middle with suspension, separate from the left and right. Um, it was just a neat action that you can never sell today. Just a cool action like that. That was like 2001. Street Savage. New Bright. Oh, got nothing. And, uh, there's a RC dog that pulls the doll. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here. Um, the tarantula. Oh, MGA's land and sea vehicle in the 2000s. Um, here's a airplane that connected to a land and sea vehicle. Here's this. Turbo Twister, uh, something to look up. I'm not sure what that one does. Turbo Twister, Shark Machines, um, 2000 Silverlit. Oh, I remember this one, the Dragonfly. It was Toy Max. 
Dragonfly, that was super cool the way this thing drove. Not something you could sell now, but those, these two things would on a motor move. So this thing would be almost round and it could flip around and stuff and this front pivoted around. It's almost cool. There's the Skydriver ripoff called Stormhopper. Um, and now we get into all these ripoffs. They, they basically, the Hong Kong, the Chinese market basically took off and started doing all these crazy tantrum-like things, reboundish-like things, and started doing this, some of what Toy Max was doing with these rotating wheels, and it started to kill the on-the-ground market, and we started to go towards helicopters and drones when you started to see these things like this. Um, hey, here's back to 1987. It's uh, a little bit out of order here. <clears throat> oh, the Shell Shocker. Yeah, that was cool. That was much later in 2000s. Um, oh, this train twister, 2004. Old military concept, actually. So that's uh, just a, a look at uh, the state of the art of the RC business up to about 2006. Good reference.